uh, go ahead and get us started on some things that are on your mind as you look back on this week involving uh, COVID-19 when it comes to our district. Well, uh, you know, first thing, there was so much excitement. Start the school year from parents and families and students and teachers and, uh, you know, looking back over what our, our county, our state, nations dealt with in the last 18 months, been very trying. Mm -hmm. Uh, very trying times and uh, you know I, I sense today that there's a lot of uh, frustration uh, still fear anger and uh, you know uh, we, we, we're trying to uh, just just have this conversation to talk about that and how are we ended up where we're at today you know I think all of us uh, in, in first of July when the numbers were, were so low and when we thought yeah COVID's gone and then we here we are uh, opening back up our schools and it has hit us uh, again uh, you know i'll give some numbers later but we cannot deny that that we have covid mm -hmm. in, in our in our community and in our schools and then uh, you know there's been a lot of uh, debates and a lot of emotions involved in this and uh, from from educators and from wilson county schools we, we want our kids in school. We want them in the safest environment possible. And there's a lot of opinions on how to do that. And we're, we're working with our local health department. They've been wonderful. We had a joint meeting this week with them and LSSD, Lebanon Special School Districts uh, team. So that that's some things that have went on this week. I know there's a, everybody's got a lot of questions uh, and uh, we just want to spend some time to discuss where we're at, mm -hmm. remind us and remind our community and our parents and our, our, our stakeholders what we're trying to do to ensure our kids can, can remain in school. And uh, again, if, um, this message is going out to all our parents. Uh, they're going to get a copy of, of this sheet that we are going to go over here on some, some key points of that. And it is the um, COVID-19 mitigation strategies for fall 2021 as we know it today. Uh, first things first, if your child is, is sick, stay home when sick. And that's the probably the most obvious thing and most common sense part of the whole deal. If, if something doesn't seem right or if there's if there's symptoms, stay home. That is, that, that is correct. You know, parents know their children better than anybody. And, and so we're encouraging our parents and if your child sick, stay home, we're, we're encouraging our staff. Uh, and, and our teachers, if, if, if you are sick, we, we request that you stay home to try to slow and, and, and slow this spread. If, if, if just in case it could be COVID, we, we're trying to take some steps and that's the first step. We'll go clockwise on this. The next thing up, uh, COVID-19 contact tracing. Uh, I'm not gonna read it word for word. Parents, you've got this sheet I've sent to you as well with this message, or if you're seeing this uh, on social media or however you may be seeing this, uh, talk a little bit about that. You know, Bart, that, that, that's one of the most frustrating parts of, of our uh, strategies we're using uh, is, is when a, a child with no symptoms gets contract traced and we've isolated them out of our uh, learning environment. Uh, that, that's frustrating, and I understand that as an educator and as a parent, I understand that, that, uh, you know, my, my child is in this district and she could get caught up in that and, and be contract traced. Uh, I, I've listened to everyone this week, and, and I do want to say something. I'm, I'm not capable right now of answering all the emails. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm reading them all uh, from from all different viewpoints. I am reading and considering them and, and trying to take that information and help us make decisions. But but this week, the, the quarantine contract tracing issue is, is one of the hottest topics. And, and I understand that. I understand the frustration of a child that's been waiting so long to get back in school, to get back in normal activities, and then to uh, not have symptoms, uh, but because they're contract traced. We're, we're basing that off of, that's a recommendation of the algorithm that was provided by the Tennessee Department of Health for us mm -hmm. to reentry our schools. And, uh, you know, I, I've, I've been just uh, emailed from both sides of this issue. And what I've got to do as the director of schools is make decisions and recommend things that, that uh, I, I think is best. Mm -hmm. And I think this is one of the steps that we have and one of the tools in our toolbox that I do believe can stop the spread of COVID. Uh, I know it is burdensome, it, it, it's frustrating, and, and you know, for a lot of people who say, well, that doesn't make any sense. But one thing we are starting to see is that more of our kids that have been contract traced across the country are now coming back and testing positive in a few days. So uh, I, I think we have to continue it. I commend our principals and our administrators 
uh, and teachers, they're spending a whole lot of time with this, and it's, it's, they're tired already after the first week. They're fatigued. You know, I talked to one principal who told me he spent 40 hours this week contract tracing. But we're going at great lengths uh, and following the guidelines to, to try to, uh, to just try to stop the spread, to, to get it to slow down. And, 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 and I feel that's one thing we, we are doing that, that is an effective way, and I think our numbers show it from our school numbers when we look at that. Go ahead and, and share those numbers with they us. They are, uh, you, you know, th these numbers, Bart, are of yesterday, late yesterday afternoon. Uh, we had 24 new positive cases in Wills County Schools yesterday. Uh, and uh, for, since we began school, on the first day of school, we've had 168 total cases. Now, our enrollment's up, you know, our total enrollment's 19,690 mm -hmm. is the last number that I've had on my desk. So those numbers are there, that's what they are. Uh, because of contact tracing, we have contract traced 850 students uh, that, that have been identified as a contract trace student. And, uh, you know, yesterday alone, 174. We know that. That that's that is very troublesome, and we've got to do a better job making sure we're getting them that education. The state uh, has allowed us to remote those students mm -hmm. and to allow them remote access, and we're still working. I, I asked for some patience for my administration mm -hmm. teachers. Uh, we're uh, five or six days, seven days into school. We're trying to get out sixteen thousand or 19,000 Chromebooks mm -hmm. to our students and that there's an inventory process. So uh, our, our plan and, and where we've got it in place and it's, it's working effectively, our students are gonna be able to, to uh, get in our classroom mm -hmm. through the virtual if they are uh, a contract trace student. Mm -hmm. And we know we've got to work some area in that to make that better, but I promise you we're working on that as we speak. We got people working on that to ensure that we're, we're meeting that. And so that, that one is one step that I think, again, gives us an opportunity to stay in school. When I look at those numbers, though, they're spread across our district. Mm -hmm. And so to me, that, that shows that, that contract tracing is, is, is assisting. A lot of people would disagree with that, mm -hmm. but, but when I've looked at all the numbers, and, and, and our, our numbers are spread uh, pretty... District-wide data that the, you look the, at. Yes, district-wide data. And, and so I think that's key. And, and uh, uh, right now, unless something changes course, that is part of our mitigation strategies. Uh, as we move uh, further down the list here, social distancing guidelines, uh, when possible, are, are certainly still there. Uh, we, we encourage that uh, to do for, you know, for our, with our, our students to, to do that, to social distance within our schools. We know our schools can be crowded, um, so it's not possible at all times, but uh, there are chances to do that when it, it is possible. That's correct, and, and, and that's a challenge, especially when you look at our enrollment numbers, we know that. Our buses, we know that, uh, and, and you know, but you know, the, the guidelines do, allow for some cohorting which was mm -hmm. in some situations we can co cohort kids and keep them in smaller groups together that eliminates some of the contract tracing hopefully uh, but we are trying to social distance when possible you know the you know i think the first day or two back there was so much excitement mm -hmm. in schools and yeah. and everybody uh was glad to see each other so uh we're, we're again reminding our, our principals this week uh, make sure that we're uh we're looking at that, and when possible, we want to social distance because, again, we know that's another key tool to, to stopping the spread of this virus. Uh, the last two on, on the sheet, uh, increased focus on hygiene and cleaning. Uh, we know that's in our schools uh, it, more than ever. It has always been in place, but um, certainly over the past several, several months, um, that is, that's there and will remain in place. It will. We've got to continue doing that, and, uh, you, you know, there, there's – everyone knows that that this is an important part of, of, of our whole community uh, you know just uh, our hygiene and washing of hands and and, and reminding us to, to keep our hands out of our face yeah. and out of our nose for our students and so we, we've got to work on that uh, but but that is something we will always continue and uh, face coverings available uh, it's it's optional in our district uh, as of now uh, face coverings available in all our schools uh, for uh, students to 
to take one or certainly bring one from, from home. It is optional to wear if one if a, if a student or family so chooses to do that. That is, and, and you know, that that's another, uh, there's a lot of emotions on that issue. Uh, and and we, uh, our district has made a decision at this point to, to be optional. And, and uh, we, we will in, in, in encourage our students to have those available if they want those or for families. And, and we do recognize family, uh, Families have different opinions on that, mm -hmm. and, and uh, it's sad to see some of the scenes we've seen this week in in, in, uh, in our state, nation o over that. And but, but it's understandable. I, I get the passion, and I get the emotions, and, and I understand that people are strong in their, in their beliefs. And and what that tells me though is, uh, for, what I would like to see is is for our community to take this and say, what can we do? Mm -hmm. We want this virus to go away. Uh, and, and come together as a community. You know, I, I encourage people on, on a personal note, just uh, probably the most trusted people in our lives that deal with these things are our doctors. Mm -hmm. the, student, the, the, the people that we entrust with our personal health care. I, I encourage people to reach out to them and talk to them and, and let them advise them on, on the information they need to make the best choice for them. And I respect that. I do respect choice. Of, of all people, but I've encouraged some people, reach out to your doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, don't, don't, don't let Jeff Luttrell be the one to tell you. You reach out to the medical professional that you trust and determine this is the route I'm gonna go for, for how I uh, protect myself and my family. Uh, is there anything else you wanna add as we close things out? I know uh, parents appreciate uh, the, uh, your thoughts on the matter and, and certainly a review of the COVID-19 mitigation strategies that we currently have in place. Uh, but you've been a principal for many, many years in our district. Now you're our director of schools, so you certainly have so much experience going for you. But honestly, nothing has ever been, uh, nothing's ever prepared you for something like this in, in all your years of education, but you certainly have learned a lot along the way in how we're dealing with it. I have, and I think we continue to, to learn. You, you know, uh, fr from being an administrator, I, I really feel for them, being a teacher, you know, now, amazingly, they're right on the front line every day with this. And not only just in taking care of our students, but trying to manage all the uh, social uh, uh, ideas and, 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 and opinions. And, uh, you, you know, to, I'd be lying to say this has not been a stressful week, because it has. Because we want our students in school, but we want them there safely. But at the same time, we want to meet the needs of our community. And, and, you know, I look in the community and see uh, where our community's at. It's, it, it's a great community. You know, 19,690 students. That's tremendous. Uh, at the same time, I, 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 I li take those emails and calls and I talk to some people. There's a fear, and I understand that as a parent, that, that when, you know, when, you, when you send your child to school, you want them in the most safe environment that there can possibly be. And so uh, it's been a tough week, but, but I commend my administrators, my teachers, our staff. Uh, they're pulling together. They're gonna continue to do that. They always have and they always will. And, and then, uh, you, you know, just our community leaders. The, the, this is uncharted waters. You, you know, I, I, I knew last year was tough, but personally I think this year's tougher because last year there was a little more agreement on oh we, we we've got to do some things to stop this mm -hmm. and, and and then we watch those numbers go down mm -hmm. and now there's 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 a feeling of uh, and, and it's frustration uh, that that man we just we want to move on mm -hmm. but yet i'm telling you we've still got covid and we've got covid in our schools and and i've got to try to make the best decisions and guide people that that provides safety for our students our staff and, and for our families mm -hmm with respecting all people at the same time. And, and, and that's, that's being uh, very important to me. I, I think it's crucial for our communities that through this process, wh whatever people's ideas or beliefs or opinions are, is that we show respect because it's our children and we should be able to agree upon what's best for our children.